Hey guys, how are we doing? Back on another video from Totally Not Mark. Kind of, I mean it is, but this video is actually uploaded onto the Team Four Star channel. It seems like this is going to be a four part documentary style video looking into behind the scenes of Dragon Ball Z Bridge, and the first part has been uploaded onto Team Four Star, which I think works out really well for Totally Not Mark because obviously Team Four Star have got a lot more subscribers and a lot more viewers and that. So, have the first part out, is really going to help the show get the views, which is class. And I'm really intrigued by this, really intrigued to have a behind the scenes because obviously Dragon Ball Z Bridge is finished. But there has to be some really cool stories and things on how people met, uh, the voice actors they brought, what influenced them to do certain jokes and things. So I'm really happy to see this. And uh, the second part was uploaded at the same time on Totally Normal Mark's channel, so we will check that out and um, three and four. Uh, so this is covering the Saiyan saga, because that's where it began. I'm really excited to like see little behind the scenes. Let's just get into it. Let's just get into it. Hey, I'm Lanny Pador, and I'm Kaisen Echo, cool. and this is Dragon Ball Z Abridged Behind the Scenes, Episode 1. Cool. Dragon Ball Z Abridged might very well be over, but that doesn't mean that the gang behind the explosively popular internet series don't have even more stories to share. They must the have. Time of the show. Oh, it's going to be fast. this year, I decided to reach out to Scott Kaiser Neko Frerix, a writer and director behind the massively popular series, if he would be open to the idea of a mini-documentary discussing the stories, excitements, and tribulations <laughs> that came with working on one of the most popular yeah. series in history. Thankfully, he said yes. yes. Boom! Approve so, the stuff! And founding member of Team Four Star, Nick Lanny Pator Landis, they patiently and enthusiastically sat down with me for two hours answering all the questions. Oh, wow, and then you cut it up. Regarding the show and its production. And so I figured what better place to start than where it all began 12 long years ago. Uh, 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 uh. That's class, yes! Oh, God, no, my marijuana pad! How did you guys come to work together, and what was it like in that very first episode's writing room? Oh, cool. If anybody knows anything about abridging, Little Karibo started with the Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridge series. And yeah, he did. Nick and myself, I like and that they've mentioned that. We kind of took inspiration from him and started making our own shows. Love it. That's against the rules, isn't it? Screw the rules, I have money. money. <laughs> as soon as you came on scene yes. with uh, Lupin the Third Abridge, yeah. I feel like everybody That's I love that they've just gone onto you because yeah, little creeper, your right? editing was like next level compared to literally everything else that was out there at the time. Which is really silly, because if you go back and watch any of those, they look they're terrible. <laughs> but still, back in the day, it was a badge of... Oh, wow, okay, I've not seen the abridgement of that. Yeah, like cool. Neko on your abridged series. Yeah, actually, I used to make intros. Um, and then you, Masako, Vegeta 3986, yeah, and um, Rissa, you guys decided to start abridging the movies for yes. Dragon Ball. We you wanted to do the Dragon Ball movies because... Uh, what idiot would do the entire show? That's stupid. Yeah. You're stupid. <laughs> Being stupid. <laughs> Eventually they talked to me and they're like, hey, literally became a matter of just ask him. No, but do it. No, but do it. Yeah. He goaded me so hard into asking you if you would join me in working on Dragon Ball Z Abridged. That's the funny part was, so we presented it to you and you said yes, but you had conditions. Yes, oh. absolutely. I was like, oh. you know what? Like with your editing and... Uh, Everybody in this room's kind of like style put into like blend it together. what we want to do. I think it could be something fantastic. Having already experienced the Class. process of abridging some of the Dragon Ball movies, when it came to joining forces with Kaiser, Lenning was adamant of two things before moving forward. One, that he had a permanent spot in the writer's room. Okay. And two, that he would finally get his chance to play the Vegeta. Saiyan Prince, Vegeta. Cool. With the terms agreed, Kaiser, Lanny, and the, the third founding member, Takahasa set out on what would eventually become DBZA's first ever episode. Oh my and god. The first night was actually a lot of fun. Double shot! No! Yeah, huh? Give me the mic! What? No, no, come on, man! Give me the mic! That's Give me a real attack now! No, what is it? <laughs> this is where we came up with the Vegeta Nappa ah, dynamic yeah. because while we were dipping up rolls, Tak was like, maybe I could do the move. <laughs> what about Nappa? And it was funny because nobody wanted to play Nappa. <laughs> no one wanted to, that's class. There were very few people that like really wanted, wanted roles. We knew immediately that, uh, that Moscow would be playing Goku. And yeah. Gohan. Mm -hmm. uh, although, in the first episode, you might remember that Vegeta 3986 played him just because he... Oh, yeah. He, he believed in fair distribution of roles, but we very quickly decided against that mm. in terms of just trying to put out a better product. Yeah, but yeah, that first night, right. we came up with a bunch of stuff, and it was really fun. It was really, it was experimental. Um, I reckon they had so much fun making this first, at the start. The I reckon as it goes on, it's stress. Trying to find our ground. 
like like you do in college. We experimented. We tried out some things. Some things worked. Some things we decided did not. <laughs> yeah. And that's how, and that's how uh, season you one. You found what you liked. Kind of <laughs> began. Yeah. Experimentation was the order of the day, throwing idea after idea at the wall to figure out what would stick. With the show finding its start in the late 2000s, jokes would often rely on non sequiturs, pop culture references, and early internet humor, for lack of a better term. Are Are you a Yoshi? Despite a lack of experience and production value, however, the team's natural chemistry and love for the series shone through, and the first episode was released to immediate success. <clears throat> During the height of Abridging's popularity, Clearly. your show gained traction right away. What was that like? It's strange because, yeah, the whole Abridged scene was really taking off. You had a bunch of different shows, you had a bunch of different creators, and I can't deny the fact that getting a bunch of the creators with the most popularity at that time and then putting them on the Together. second most popular anime franchise in the world at the time was definitely a that's crazy definitely yeah. um helped accelerate our uh, our growth <laughs> i remember uh, cracking at you a few times because on your personal channel you at this point had made like a 10,000 or 20,000 subscribers oh, yeah. special <laughs> and oh, wow. we put out the ads like on each of our individual channels announcing that we were going to do Dragon Ball Z abridged yeah and oh wow look you know, at the old style channel, channel ready, design we had, like, a video on it i think it was one of the ads or maybe all five of them i can't remember but as soon as we put that up there people started flocking to that and it had like 20, 30, 40,000, 50,000 wow. overnight. And I'm like, hey, are you ready with that 10,000? I remember having that channel design at one point. Yeah. Oh my we made God. A, an over 9,000 subscriber of course you did. video after episode one. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's Which, class. That's know, absolutely class. Oh. There are so many people out there nowadays with 2 million subscribers, 3 million subscribers, yeah, 14 million like, subscribers. We feel, like a, we feel like a relatively small fish in this pond at this point. <sighs> yeah, but at the time, that would have been huge. getting over 10,000 subscribers huge. in a week was That's mental. insane. That's mental anyway. Within the span of a single year, Team 4 Star went from being a relatively unknown passion project carried on the backs of a few friends scattered across the globe to hosting their very first panel That's at brilliant. Yomacon 2009. This Amazing. This was the very first time that the cast of Dragon Ball Z Abridged would be in the same room together. That's cool as well, because obviously, the like, different countries in there. Himself, little Karibo. Cool. What was the most unexpected Because Little Karibo and Sakura X from, from the UK, aren't they? The finale definitely offered a lot of challenges, because one of the things... That I know Little Karibo lives over in the US now, but... Fighting. Mostly because it's been a difficult process to learn how to make fighting funny. Oh, yeah! Uh, especially considering that a lot of the time the fighting itself doesn't offer a lot of opportunity for talking. That would have been interesting, wouldn't it? Because they're like humor, just doing dialogue and, and it's like, right, how do we talk about fighting? Ed cool. Sound effects on top of it and call it a day. So when we got to the actual big fight with Goku versus Vegeta, it was this process of how do we balance out the fighting with the funny? With the comedy, yeah. Kyokan! <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> With the spotlight firmly on Goku and Amazing. Vegeta, characters like Chiaotzu, Yamcha, and Tin Shinhan didn't end up receiving a lot of focus early on, resulting in underdeveloped, half-realized characters during the Saiyan Saga. Yes. Knowing that Krillin would play a larger role in future arcs, most of their energy regarding secondary character development fell onto him. And although the issues would be remedied in future seasons, mm -hmm. during the Saiyan Saga, the supporting cast lacked any meaningful established character or personality. With that said, however, there was one obvious exception. I am hilarious and you will quote <laughs> Nappa just I keeps say. going. Nobody really thought about Nappa at the time. <laughs> Nappa's we were, ghost uh, in the... Oh. Coming up with ghost Nappa. We, we were thinking like, oh yeah, the big characters, big moments later on, Frieza, Cell, And then he's resurrected back we with the Dragon Ball. We didn't think about, you know, the, the secondary characters, like, especially throughout the Saiyan Saga, Raditz, Nappa, but as soon as Taka and I started, like, going back and forth, like... We even appeared in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge, then he's the ghost. ...very well when it comes to... Uh, writing yeah, certain you, scenes. You guys synergized incredibly well in the writing room. Yeah. Which is why the whole Napa Vegeta dynamic kind of evolved. You two kept bouncing off of each other and we realized That's no, class. this is the humor the there. suddenly became the strongest part of season one. And that's that's kinda crazy to me. <laughs> oh well at least we still had fun getting here, right Vegeta? Vegeta? <laughs> Vegeta? Vegeta <laughs> Nappa quickly became oh. a fan favorite during season one. What was it like when the time came to kill him off? Oh. Were you at all worried? 
that of first course. conversation we had, that first night when we came up with the dynamic of Vegeta and Nappa, we um, knew that was going to be something that people glommed on. They're not going to be like, yeah, they were like, no, the you know what? Concept of Ghost Nappa, the first night. That, Ghost that Nappa was an amazing idea. It's true. It's true. We were so afraid of killing, of actually letting him die, because there's always a character in a show that everyone will glom onto is like that is the funniest guy. That's the character that whenever he's on screen, everyone's going to find you gotta get hilarious, rid of him. and you will quote everything, everything I, I say. say. <laughs> yes, there's a reason we wrote that joke for now, especially. Um, and it doesn't help that in that first season we were still finding a lot of our ground. We were, we were tr still trying to find our flavor, our, our method, um, and to be honest with you, Napa was our funniest character, and the idea of him having to leave was scary. So and keep so, him around. Yeah, we came up with Ghost Napa, and if I could change anything, I probably would have not come up with Ghost Napa. Huh? Because he never actually went anywhere or did anything in season two. He kind of yeah. you know, he was but... he was literally a beta for what we did with Kami and Nail. Yeah. If, if, if anything, those characters, like what happened with them, were far, far better examples. Yeah. But the reason that Ghost Napa did sort of work in places later on was mostly the fact that like Piccolo, Vegeta is alone on Namek. Yeah. So having a part of, is it actually Ghost Nap or is it part of his psychosis? Yeah, like is someone just like, was is it in my head, yeah. There. Something that we've never actually confirmed one way or the other, inside or outside the writer's room, actually. Yeah, we, we actually don't have a concrete answer for that. Yeah. Over you the did course bring of 11 back months, now. the team is approaching completion of the Saiyan Saga. With the death of their most popular character, Team 4 Star found themselves without a safety net moving forward. And while fans were anxious that the show would dip in quality, the team's writing instead skyrocketed, as they found themselves so prepping for what would God. become their very first season finale. How did your writing style and method change between episodes 1 and 10? When we were writing episode 1, we had never worked together before. No. We did not know each other's style, so we were literally throwing in like, Learning oh, as hey, you're going, that's class, yeah. Show, like this, let's, hey, hey, let's, let's do more the of that, yeah. joke from Lupin the Third, episode one. Uh, oh, uh, this, this, and we were also pulling from people outside of, you know, the three of us to be like, hey, what, what would be good here? So, like, that's where the, the fighting over the Raditz's mic joke came from, the actor switch mid thing. Eventually. Kaiser, Taka, and myself, we got a lot more comfortable just working amongst each other, and we got comfortable with with each other's styles. And so uh, as we went through season one, uh, we looked outward significantly less, and we uh, just refined our ideas amongst ourselves. Yeah. It, it's sort of interesting when you think about character development in, a, in an abridged series. Yeah, like an abridgment character actually yeah. developing is like... what ended up <clears> happening. <throat> Our version of They're of different these characters, characters completely, aren't they? Over the course of that first season and into the second season. In fact, as something you'll see is that by the end of the second season, the characters are now where exactly where they are for all of the third season. Yeah. Yes. But over the course of the first and the second, you can see already the growing, change, yeah. develop, and specifically the finale is actually I think where Vegeta and Goku actually kind of come into their own because yeah. that's where their dynamic is formed and that's where we had to figure out exactly what we wanted their dynamic for to us be, to be yeah. yeah and of course class, it's just as antagonistic it's crazy isn't it like they're the changing show. it so it needs to be different <laughs> while doing away with Napa God, I miss Dragon Ball like Z Bridge. That we had to climb over, and now it's like, okay, I mean, it's still there. Just, these two oh. characters and still make it funny and enjoyable. And it's kind of great because I wish I didn't Goku switches out for now. Watch it before doing uh, my reaction back, videos. Zoolander, the guy who's constantly putting Vegeta and testing Vegeta's patience, is suddenly replaced by a guy who can also hit back. Mm -hmm. uh, which, yeah, that that was a lot of fun. How will our heroes bring back their fallen compatriots? What new dangers will present themselves? <laughs> Has anyone really not seen this show already? Find out in the next season of Dragon Ball Z Abridged.
From simple internet humor among a few friends across the globe, from just another abridging series in a sea of little Karibo clones. By 2009, Team Four Star had begun the process of assembling what would eventually become a globally recognized parody production. Hell yes. They would go on to host numerous panels across the world, and after having established a new distinct writing style, all the while completing their very first season of DBZA. The episodes and subsequent seasons to follow would only further cement themselves as the professional production company they would ultimately become. To see that success and to follow Team Four Star behind the scenes for their Frieza saga, click the link on screen now to see part two to this documentary series. I love how they've Thank done you this. So much for watching. I love how they've done at the same time. So they uploaded part one to Team Four Star and then part two. They're totally not Mark's channel. That really. I would have said yes to that. I would have said yes to having the first part on their channel and then having the rest continue with a link as well. God, that's really going to help the um, this series get some views, man. I'm, Made up for totally Mark getting that. Why is my Siri going mad? What did I say? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that was really good. That was a really good look at the uh, beginning of Dragon Ball Z abridged. I, I, I loved that. I loved the questions. I loved the responses. And I loved the little the way it was edited and the little cuts to add humor to it. That was that was great. I'm definitely going to check out the next one, and I'm sure there's going to be four parts. So. Thank you guys very much for watching. What did you guys think of that? What did you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe, have already, leave comments down below. Let me know what I should watch or discuss in future videos, and I'll see you guys. There's all you guys. Next time.